All right, hello. Uh, we're gonna do, we're here in the Mimic Lounge, and we're gonna do a quick uh, fireside chat with Faye Arjamandi, the founder of Mimic, and Sivash Alamudi, the CEO. Uh, we've been, uh, we've been doing a number of press briefings this week to prepare for the launch and hopefully get some good coverage for Mimic. And uh, we've had an interesting time talking to the press and trying to convey the Mimic story. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, that I discovered along the way is that, of course, Siavash is a famous individual. Uh, Siavash is a wireless pioneer. Uh, he's uh, well known for a variety of things, you know, Alamudi Code, CTO of the Intel Communications Group, YGIG, YMAX, etc. So sometimes when we talk to the press, they already know who Siavash is. And so an, an interesting question comes up. Siavash, so you're well known for being a wireless pioneer, and now here you are, CEO of Mimic. We're a software company talking about decentralizing the cloud. How does that work? What is the connection? What, what, what's, in, what's in common with your past history with wireless and, and now with the cloud? Well, I'm a communications engineer, right? I uh, did my uh, degree in electrical engineering and wireless communications. My passion uh, for technology was always the use of technology, not the technology itself. You know, and, I, and the reason I got involved in communication was that I realized very early on that knowledge and access to information was the most important thing for uh, democracy, democratizing nations, and bringing uh, equality into the world. So that was my passion. That's the way uh, I got involved. So initially, connectivity was a big issue. I remember when I worked on CDPD, for instance, we were working on a technology that sent 19.2 kilobits per second. That was the first protocol that, in fact, in Vancouver, in a company that was called NPR, I started working on. Uh, when I uh, was, it was a project that was uh, done by Macaw Cellular, which was eventually acquired by AT&T Wireless. So that's uh, how I started my career, and then I got into 2G, 3G, 4G, with mobile WiMAX that uh, became LTE, and now of course we have 5G coming. It was a few years back uh, that I uh, reached the realization that. Uh, uh, the physical layer connectivity, the amount of data that you can send, is only one aspect. Now, uh, the uh, uh, infrastructure, client-server architecture that we had built uh, had become the bottleneck, because now uh, with, with the uh, first generation of mobile internet, in order to make uh, building applications easier and creating an app economy, uh, we came up with an architecture where we put the servers in data centers in the cloud, and that's what we know as the cloud, and devices were clients that would connect to it. And uh, no matter what kind of physical connectivity you bring, uh, then you have to send all the information back. It, uh, there were serious issues around uh, bandwidth, obviously latency, because speed of light, you can, they can never overcome. You, you can't exceed the speed of light. Wait a minute, isn't, isn't technology going to help us out? Isn't 5G going to save the world? Isn't the internet growing fast enough to accommodate this? Yeah, of course 5G is going to help, but 5G is going to give us an order of magnitude improvement. But we're talking about uh, capacities in the factor of 1,000 uh, required. Of course we could do this uh, in, in, uh, with the current, uh, uh, current technologies, but it's going to be very expensive. It's not going to be environmentally friendly. We're going to have to, for every device that we add, we're going to have to add servers uh, in data centers to support them. So we're creating devices uh, that uh, we are only using uh, for a few hours a week. Most of them, they're sitting there uh, idle. Uh, we're not using all the computing resources there. On top of that, we're burdening our networks. And on top of that, we're, we're also compromising our privacy because we're sending information 
uh, through the pipes, making ourselves vulnerable to uh, hacks, to privacy attacks. So that uh, client-server architecture doesn't make sense. You know, it was uh, I, I met uh, Fay came and pitched uh, the technology to me in, in uh, 2010. Uh, she had a company called Desternet. Uh, uh, and explained to me what uh, they did, which was bring the network closer to the edge. And that's where kind of uh, the lights went on for me. And I said, okay, this is, uh, this is the future. That's what we need to be doing. Okay, so, so Faye, let's, let's take it up to today. How does Mimic address the challenges that Sivash was just talking about? So does it address the challenges? Yes, it definitely does uh, address the challenges because uh, what we saw, what, what I saw the opportunity, what we saw the opportunity is really uh, uh, cloud, uh, basically infrastructure as a service have done so many good things for the developer community, right? And generally speaking for software architectures. Uh, and, and when you look at the amount of computing on these edge devices, and you look at the amount of resource that is available on cloud, you realize that as uh, as the as, with software uh, basically with serverless architecture that hosted on on cloud now you can expand the capability of cloud to the edge of network and uh, if you can create an environment that you can actually run those back end server softwares as in macro macro services on the edge where is closer to the demand where the application reside, uh, then we can actually start offloading uh, the traffic uh, by, by first, uh, when application make a request to server, the server could exist on the same device. Uh, so that's, that's part of uh, uh, basically tra saving the traffic from preventing it to always go to the cloud. And the second one is to network these devices. So when I want to communicate with you, uh, basically I can just directly communicate with you versus always the need to go uh, to the cloud, which actually reduce uh, the latency. Uh, and the other one, as Sivash said, is that we make ourselves vulnerable by constantly sending the, the data up to the cloud. Uh, just imagine that we can actually process that data on the edge. And instead of, share, instead of sharing data, we can share knowledge with other nodes. Uh, so this way we can improve uh, the privacy as well. So that's basically the basis of uh, Mimic Edge Cloud Platform, that we turn every device, including your Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspbian, uh, all kind of well-known operating system into a cloud server. So now application and server can coexist on same device. And then we enable server-to-server -server communication, which, uh, which can be a lower latency, lower cost of cloud, and, uh, uh, and increasing the data privacy. So this, is, this isn't some product that, that uh, Mimic offers. It's really a platform for developers to innovate on and, and, and build on it. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So what we have pretty much is an end-to-end -end communication platform. Uh, one major part of it is this software development toolkit, SDK, uh, that now today is available uh, uh, via our developer portal to be downloaded on every major operating system. Uh, and, uh, and now application developers can basically uh, practice what they learned on cloud, uh, based on cloud software uh, application architecture on edge device with no limitation. Uh, it's really, uh, it allows developers, the only limitation or the only constraint is that they have to develop the server micro, serverless microservices, those back end uh, servers in JavaScript, which is the uh, sister family of Node.js. Other than that, developers can use any application development framework of their choice to develop their applications uh, and, uh, and basically have no constraints. So now app to app, uh, can 
can talk to each other, uh, cross device, cross operating system, cross network, uh, even cross cloud providers. So instead of tying their developer's hand and pushing them to be stuck to one vertical uh, kind of a cloud provider, now you expand it and you allow developers to basically get the best of all worlds, if uh, we call it that way. Great. Uh, Siavash mentioned that you pitched him the idea in 2010. So, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and now here we are in the Mimic Lounge <laughs> and we're uh, making the uh, Edge SDK available to the broader development community right now. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? Did it, did it work out the way that you expected or, or what? First of all, I was only 18 when I met you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's in almost 10 years. Uh, the, the, this, this, this feels tremendously good. Uh, when, when basically I came up with this idea of uh, pushing uh, uh, the, the network or the cloud to the edge in 2009, uh, when, when I talk to people, they, they look at me as if I grew two heads. Uh, and the first version of product was really uh, to put the software on a gateway at, at the customer premise, uh, which today uh, it's called the fog computing. Uh, but really what we saw in 2014, uh, a reverse in computing. We saw that the, the, the gateway at the edge computing is going down, but the computing on these devices is going up. So we said, why should Edge be limited to those gateways? So let's expand to include every device. Um, it feels good to, to hear uh, when, the, when an analyst says, this is the missing link <laughs> of future uh, uh, growth that we need in the next generation of uh, software. Uh, it's, uh, it also feels good uh, that, that, you, that, that kind of I wake up and I say, hey, I wasn't the crazy one after all, uh, <laughs> that I came up with this, uh, this concept. It also feels good uh, because I feel like I was fortunate enough that through my journey, uh, meeting uh, my team members uh, who shared the same vision, who kind of stuck with, uh, with me. It also feels good to meet people like you guys who are renowned in your area uh, that, that kind of see the same vision uh, and kind of uh, uh, join the club and, uh, and, uh, and kind of ride the journey, ride the wave. Uh, and, and we stayed laser focused. Despite me, some people say, oh, nine years, how could you kind of, how could you last so long? If we only made it because we stayed laser focused uh, and now we see the world needs a cloud, edge cloud fabric like this. Think of a smart city. Uh, think of a communication between the future application. Everybody's talking about Internet of Things. Uh, the way I see it is really Internet of Systems and Subsystems. A smart city application need to be able to communicate with an ambulance a healthcare application need to communicate with uh, public transportation. Uh, this is systems need to communicate with each other. And it's only possible if you have a cloud fabric, an edge cloud fabric, that every node participate and now enables applications to communicate with each other. It feels great and I'm, I'm grateful for every single advisor, partner, customer, team members who are here tonight to share this excitement with all of us. Fantastic. Uh, Siavash, one of the things that really appealed to me and, and made me want to come and join the partner party here is the uh, that it's, it's a fundamental technology and it's built on very sound principles. And I know that uh, last year you gave a keynote where you, you talked about the principles of decentralization. And I wonder if you could just mention maybe just a few of them and, sure, and talk sure. about that. So uh, in order, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rather uh, uh, methodical in my approach to technology, I have to convince myself first that uh, what we're doing is principally the right thing to do. So 
uh, when we looked at the architecture, looked at some of the requirements, uh, one was a, a, a principle that uh, I, I called uh, meritocracy, which means that any computing resource should be able to participate in the network based on merit, right? So servers in data centers have a role, you know? They, uh, uh, they're always on, they're protected, uh, secured uh, 24 hours a day, uh, they uh, they're, uh, perhaps have more computing uh, resources. They have a role. My mobile phone is on and off once in a while. It has uh, LTE connectivity when I'm outside. It has Wi-Fi connectivity when I'm inside. It has a merit depending on when I use it. My uh, game player has merit. My uh, fridge, connected fridge has, has merit. So everybody, all this computing needs to be able to participate in the network on the basis of its merit, right? So that's uh, what we call the principle of meritocracy. The other principle was a uh, principle of uh, clustering. And uh, for those people that uh, studied communication theory, uh, they never taught us in school uh, uh, something that uh, I later on learned, something called a, an anthropologist from Oxford University, uh, Professor Dunbar is his name. He, they did research uh, and uh, found out that all of us as individuals at most have 150 meaningful relationships, and that's called the Dunbar number. So all communication happens in cluster, whereas when I was going to school, all the protocols that we designed, we designed them for millions of people connecting. Uh, in, uh, so of course, in cellular architecture, multiple people connecting to a single base station, uh, but never considered the fact that this communication, all 90% of the communication happens really in small clusters. When you have 150 close relationships, that means on a daily basis, you have maybe five or six active connections, right? So communication by clusters was another principle. So uh, forming clusters real time, that's what was another principle uh, that we applied this to. The other principle was microservice uh, com level communication because it's not enough to physically connect to each other, right? Because if you have to host your application still in the cloud, you still need that central entity to go to. So direct microservice to microservice communication uh, was uh, another principle uh, that we had to apply. And also the other important thing is what we call dynamic instantiation, instantiation of resources, right? Meaning uh, that you should only use energy, uh, use bandwidth when absolutely needed on the fly. Not constantly ping, uh, like with present servers, constantly I'm up and up, ping, 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 ping. Uh, communication all over the place, wasting energy, dynamically instantiating resources to uh, where it's needed. There are uh, multiple other principles that are a little bit more uh, detailed, but these, are the, these were the fundamental principles. And we made sure that we stuck to those principles and uh, uh, our team, including Michel Berger, our, our CTO, Faye, uh, uh, really, they were religious on these issues and constantly pushed, and it was a challenge even internally within our team. Uh, sometimes you lose uh, sight of what you want to do, and say, so, oh, well, I could solve this problem. I can put a present server in the cloud, <laughs> and then we have the product ready. So no, that's not the point. <laughs> we can't have a present server in the cloud. We're trying to do this in, in a decentralized fashion. So having those principles in place was really a guiding thing for us to be able to focus and do the right thing especially as a startup when you go out there and you're trying to uh, do fundraising uh, and convince people that you want to do this and this thing is taking a long time, it's easy to take shortcuts and we wanted to make sure that we're never going to take those shortcuts because you're going to end up with something that it's a so what, right? So that's why it's taken so long. We've stuck to it and finally the platform is ready. <laughs> so uh, another, th another thing that comes up in our conversations with the press, so uh, is Mimic anti-cloud? Are, are we here to replace AWS or 
any of these uh, cloud providers? I mean, we're, we're disrupting this whole thing. Are we against the cloud? Uh, no, uh, on contrary, we actually about expand the cloud, make cloud available everywhere, right? So that's, that's what we are saying. We're saying that by just maintaining uh, cloud within the data centers, uh, you're not going to be able to uh, uh, meet the, the need and the requirements of applications of future. Uh, and by the way, cloud by itself is distributed, right? But now, again, these computers are available uh, to make this mobile phone, laptops, all of these are available computing. So let, let's expand that capability to include every edge device. Because unless you do that, you can't sustain this, uh, this, uh, this kind of a model of just let's add more and more uh, motherboard and hardware to, to the data centers. Uh, you can't sustain it in terms of physical space, you can't sustain it in terms of cost, you can't sustain it in terms of uh, energy uh, that requires. Uh, so let's help it and expand it uh, so that now every device is a cloud server uh, that uh, you can enable that communication between the nodes and applications. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, the cloud providers need to be happy, will be happy about it because, because the dirty secrets of cloud is always also that uh, uh, to run in a small task, you have the same overhead as running a large task. So you lose money on running a small task. So therefore, by extending this cloud, uh, you basically can maintain the data centers as another node of com available computing to do things such as identity management, post-processing of uh, data for data analytics purposes, uh, authorization and authentication. So there is a need for that, but also there is a need uh, for device-to-device uh, -device communication or pretty much server-to-server -server communication uh, for the applications of future. So it's still early days, but where are we getting traction with, with uh, customers using the platform? Where do you, where do you see it? Yeah, who are the early adopters? What, what kind of markets? We, you know, we, we've, we mentioned our customers. We have gaming, we have uh, health and wellness, uh, and we have uh, Lime, which is maybe more specialized in the telecommunications world. But where, where do you see it getting traction? Uh, pretty much, uh, uh, so pretty much imagine every application that you develop using the cloud, you can now use Edge uh, to extend the capability of that, uh, uh, that applications or, or basically to, to benefit from Edge Cloud. But we are in discussions with, uh, uh, with I would say anywhere from automotive industry, just, just as early as this morning, we had a fantastic car with one of the largest brands in, in automotive, and uh, they had the team from technology, and they, they constantly were saying, we have not seen anything like this or heard anything like this. This is what we need. Uh, automotive, because uh, imagine when, when in a self-driving car, uh, every move of a car need to be communicated with other cars around this car, right? Otherwise, collision will happen immediately. So uh, therefore, when you develop uh, these applications for autonomous vehicles, uh, you need to make sure that car to car can communicate from application point of view, from macro service point of view, uh, infotainment inside the car. I mean, today our infotainment systems inside the car uh, is still quite 1980. Just you can't even attach multiple Bluetooth device to your, uh, to your infotainment and it, uh, just pull music from each device and listen to it, it's one at a time. Uh, but the ability that you're all in sitting in the cloud and now you can, sitting in the car, and now you can create a jukebox of every music that you have on device or on your 
servers at home and just one person connect to Bluetooth and all musics can play with, uh, within the car from every uh, person. So instead of creating an isolated environment inside the car, you can create an engaging environment with all passengers. Uh, we see in oil and gas industry, uh, especially around uh, data um, integrity when it comes to environmental uh, information. There is no policies that uh, uh, the data need to remain on the edge because there is, a, there is a risk of data being contaminated in cloud. So when the, uh, when the person comes uh, to the site to visit, they need to look, be able to look at different oil and gas pumps and get the data from the oil and gas pump. So we see, um, we are in discussion with drone to drone, for drone to drone communications. Uh, so we see really a, a, a wide variety, again, is anything that uh, the world had envisioned with cloud uh, that opens now up with edge. And now there are new, uh, features and new applications that people had not even thought about. I mean, we came across, as we discussed with different people, a new solutions that they had not thought about that is possible, that now it's possible with Edge Cloud. So uh, the future is exciting. Okay, so I guess maybe that's a good way to wrap it up. Uh, Siavash, where do you see us going? Where do you see the company going in, 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 the, in the short term, say the next uh, one or two years. Well, look forward to the day that we see hundreds of millions of devices with Edge SDK. Uh, devices turn into servers, a, a greater cloud generated, uh, a more private, a more open internet, you know, less reliance on uh, uh, a very large companies on all our communication and data, uh, more people being able to uh, connect. Uh, to each other thanks, uh, thanks to our technology and our business uh, growing and partners and ecosystems. We, we're a believer in ecosystems. It, uh, we, we're not going to, uh, I don't envision Mimic having tens of thousands of employees. Uh, what I envision is that we have uh, uh, tens of millions uh, of developers, enterprises adopting the technology and joining us in uh, extending the cloud to the edge, and as a result, uh, bring a more open internet, more efficient, more eco-friendly, less costly, uh, and uh, hopefully creative and new experiences that are not possible today. Fantastic. Let's mimic the cloud to the edge. Let's mimic the cloud to the edge, and I think it's time to get one of those specialty cocktails that we have all about the cloud. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.